put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Mando Review. Colonel John Matrix is a retired commando, hence the title, living with his darling daughter Jenny, who in the first montage of the film is established as having a really lovey-dovey relationship with him. And one day when she is kidnapped, he is forced to work for a dictator that he thought he had stopped. But he's not going to do the work he was supposed to. Instead, he's going to try to get Jenny back. But he only has a limited time to do so until the plane he leaves, yes, lands and they find that he wasn't on it and yeah, there's the primary ticking clock for the movie. And so he has to find out where she is and find a way there. And that pretty much covers it. Yes, the this is pretty much the the epitome of big, dumb, fun action flick from the 80s. It doesn't get much more fun or dumb than this. The... I, I should actually say that unlike some of the other big action flicks from the 80s, this is really rather tense. It never really slows down. It's constantly, like, pretty much the first thing you see is people being killed. There's, and, and then, you know, very soon after, yeah, I, I really don't want to give too much away, but it just constantly, there's constantly something, and it keeps one-upping itself, which is really cool. They, they have a lot of stuff where they are like really <laughs> stroking Arnie's ego, I guess you could say. Parts of this you could classify as muscle porn, really, or, or bodybuilder porn, I guess. Just close-ups of Arnie's biceps for a few seconds, and then, like, his, I don't know, other muscles, you know, just, that's, that's actually his introduction. The first couple of shots you see of him are just close-up, close-ups of his muscles. That just, yeah, what else do you need to know? And, you know, you have stuff, you have shots of him doing stuff that, yeah, he's, he's really remarkably strong, this character is. There's, there's stuff that he, clearly, you couldn't actually do in real life, but, yeah, it's, it's fun, and it's, I mean, the, the movie is a male fantasy, of course, and so, the, the more of that kind of stuff there is, the better. 
But yeah, it really delivers as such. We have some really great fighting scenes, these showdowns between Arnie and, among others, Bill Duke. And yeah, I'd, I'd say that right there, by itself, is reason enough to watch this movie if, if you haven't already. Why haven't you already? And the, the music by James Horner really keeps the, the tension going really, really fast and just constantly moving, moving, moving. And actually, with that said, the movie also uses silence really, really effectively at times. The I, I should maybe make it clear from a technical standpoint, this isn't a great movie. It's it's passable, but there are some there there's a couple of bits of awkward editing, maybe and and sometimes like also in the in the sound editing, they're a little there's, there's one or two sound effects that are missing, and then there's this one bit near the start of the film where there's people are getting hit, and yeah, just a short range fight, and they only use one sound. Every single time someone gets hit, it's the same sound, and it's, it's really noticeable. Even if you're not trying to notice stuff like that, you're probably going to notice that. It, it kind of ruins the illusion a little bit, briefly, there. This manages to fit in pretty much all of the action movie cliches. The, the bad guys can't aim when trying to shoot Arnie. Arnie always gets the mission done and really well, even, you know, for being a supposed commando, he's not exactly the stealthiest in this. It's, it's kind of like with the Rambo sequels. Supposedly, this guy is actually on the subject of Rambo. This has a, I, I don't remember what the character's called in Rambo, but that colonel who's in... Actually, I guess all three of the original films, there's a character almost exactly... He looks so much like him in this movie, and he's got the same kind of... Yeah, it's... Yeah. The... There is a... He's, John Matrix is helped along by a stewardess. Ray... Don Chong, I think it is. Yeah, I haven't really seen her in anything else. She's fine. <laughs> it's... <laughs> At times, she's the comic relief. And she gets a little irritating. But not for long stretches of time. They kind of get a good balance between annoying and she's also quite useful. She actually gets him out of a f situation or two. There's, yeah, she, she holds her own. She's not just constantly needing rescuing, but don't worry. We don't have to fear for our frail male egos. It is mainly him getting stuff done. I do commend them for not particularly sexualizing her, or anyone else, there's surprisingly little, almost none, of, yes, yeah, sexualization of women. It's, yeah, on, uh, in that one regard, it's not like too many other action flicks. Actually, the one character who's kind of misogynist is a bad guy, so 
yeah, there's, and, and certainly Arnie's character shows no real misogynistic kind of, yeah. The, the two have a, a couple of funny little exchanges. There's stuff where the, the stewardess, you know, I'm starting to wonder if she had a name. I'm just going to go with stewardess. Stewardess says something and Arnie turns and looks at her like, ugh. And it's, yeah, they actually have a, maybe they should do like a, a sitcom or something and that should be the trademark. I guess it's a little late for that, but maybe they should have back then is what I'm saying. The humor is quite good throughout. I mean, it's mostly one-liners and macho, ma machoism, I guess. Which is actually, the movie's clearly aware of this, because there actually is one point where Arnie and someone else is like exchanging macho one-liners, and literally the stewardess says, I can't believe this macho BS. And it's just, yeah, it's, they totally knew what they were doing with that. And the one-liners vary somewhat, and there's certainly a lot of them. Maybe a bit too many, frankly. But there are some fantastic ones, like the one that everybody knows about, about telling someone that he'll kill them last. I will not divulge what the payoff to that is. And speaking of payoff, as I was saying about the pace, the movie is all build up and payoff. There's really nothing it, it wastes no time. It very quickly establishes that Matrix is, you know, he's retired, he's living with Jenny, who, and they, they have this hallmark card relationship. And soon after he's being, you know, forced to do this, assassination by a foreign dictator and former dictator. Yeah, it's it's just constantly going and the whole movie is either there's like tension and we know that there is this, as I mentioned before, ticking clock where John can't spend too much time on, you know, he has to actually get to, he, he has to find out where Jenny is and get to her before the plane that he was supposed to be on lands. And he can't let any of the dictator's men find out that he wasn't on the plane. So he's constantly trying to balance this, having to get to these various goons for information and not being spotted by the goons. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. The... While this does Make, bl make stuff blow up and have, you know, nameless extras jumping away from explosions and falling off railings. Actually, not too much falling off railings. Wasted opportunity there. There is surprisingly little graphic violence in this. The, the there is bit of blood and one or two gore effects, but there's very few, like, 
I don't know what they call them, body squibs, I guess. Or certainly body squibs with blood in them. Like, you'll see that people are getting hit. But it's... Yeah, you, you don't see a lot of blood. It's also really cool how they literally have Arnie use basically every type of gun any you know pistol submachine gun i could go on but yeah that's they they just want to make sure to fit all of them in there i suppose that more or less it. The movie is roughly 80 minutes, maybe a little bit more, not counting the credits, and it's a fun ride every step of the way, and yeah, it just, excuse me, it keeps building until the explosive climax and never lets up. It's, for, the, the movie basically doesn't pull anything out of thin air. Like, you can follow how they get from point A to point B. And like I said, you know, things are set up. They, it's, well, there's maybe one or two things that you'll be wondering about how exactly that happened. But yeah, on the whole... It, it does set things up, but with that said, it is very, very dumb, but it's the fun kind of dumb, and it, it knows it's dumb. It's not trying to tell you that it's, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.